cloning a repository and using Unix commands. This video is part of a series of sponsored videos for Cal State Fullerton's College of Engineering and Computer Science. The video's description below will contain links to all the resources covered in this video. We'll start with an overview and then learn how to use the terminal to work with GitHub repositories and the Git utility. We will use a program called a terminal. This program is used to issue commands to the computer and to receive the output from the commands. For many technical computer users, the terminal is just... We will use a program called a terminal. This program is used to issue commands to the computer and to receive the output from the commands. For many technical computer users, the terminal is used just as often as the mouse or touch screen. Commands are typed at the command prompt. The command prompt will look different on different computers. What will remain the same is that the prompt ends in a dollar sign. This is where you type in commands. Don't be shy to experiment. If you type in the command wrong, then the terminal will tell you and you can try again. There are a lot of great resources out there about how to use the Unix or Linux command line. If you're a beginner, I recommend getting a book about how to use the command line. I find that the structure of a book helps students more than using an internet search engine. Julie Evans has published many wonderfully written and illustrated zines. The zines are a very affordable... Uh, Julie Evans has published many wonderfully written and illustrated zines. The zines are very affordable and present the material in an easy to digest and fun manner. William Schott's book, The Linux Command Line, is a very complete and is available online as a zero cost ebook. This book is an excellent reference and the price is hard to beat. Git is the tool that we will use to copy our projects from GitHub to our computer. It is a Git is the tool that we will use to copy our projects from GitHub to our computer. It is also the tool that we will help us. Git is the tool that we will use to copy our projects from GitHub to our computer. It is also the tool that will help us track changes and ultimately send the changes we make back to GitHub. Git is an incredibly complicated tool. I strongly recommend getting one or more reference books about Git to help you master the program. The Git and GitHub websites both have great video tutorials. This may be a good place to start if you learn best by watching examples. Scott Chacon and Ben Straub's book ProGit is an excellent book that covers all the basics. It is a zero cost ebook which includes many step by step examples. I recommend that all students read chapters 1 and 2 of this book to help them master how to use Git. Kate Seiler Miller and Julie Evans have a great zine for students who want a practical and fun book which covers some more advanced topics. For the remainder of this video, we will configure Git to work with our GitHub account using our personal access token, then create a repository by using an invitation link for GitHub Classroom. From there, we will copy the repository from GitHub to our computer. As we do this, we will learn about common commands such as CD, LS, PWD, and Clang++. These two links will be used during the demonstration. They are given in the video's description so that you can copy and paste the links into your own computer if you want to follow along. Let's start by configuring Git. Git is a command line program that we will use in this video to copy our C++ GitHub repository onto our own computer. In order for this to work, we need to configure Git to know who we are and how to log into GitHub. This can be challenging if you've never done this before, so I have a script that we'll download and use to help us configure Git. First, let's open a terminal window. Once the terminal is open, use the wget command to download my gcf.sh script. The command is given in the video's description, so you can copy and paste it on your own computer. The download should be very fast since the file is very small. Next, we run the script and follow the instructions printed in the terminal. Don't worry if you make a mistake. You can always rerun the script. You only need to do this once.
Once this process is completed, Git should be configured. Now is a good time to get your GitHub personal access token. We will need it shortly to log into GitHub. Next, let's use the GitHub Classroom invitation link to accept our imaginary lab assignment. Our lab assignment is a C++ program that we will copy onto our computer using Git. Using our web browser, go to the classroom.github.com link given in the video's description. Click on Accept and wait a few seconds, then refresh the page and you now have your very own copy of the lab assignment. Notice that the repository's link or URL ends with your GitHub username. This is your personal repository. Next, we copy our GitHub repository from github.com to our computer. Notice the green button named code Click on the button. Make sure that there is an underline between, below HTTPS. Copy the link to your computer's clipboard by clicking the copy icon. Switch to the terminal. You can use the pwd and ls commands to take a look at where you are in the computer's file system. Next, we will use the git command to copy the repository from GitHub to our computer. We'll need our GitHub personal access token to complete this step, so make sure you have that ready. Type git clone and then paste the link we just copied. You can do this by right-clicking in the window and selecting Paste. Control c won't work the same way you expect. Make sure the command you're using is all on one line, git clone, then the link. Press Enter and you will be prompted for your GitHub login. Type this in. Next, it will ask you for your password. This is where you will need to enter your GitHub personal access token. The easiest way to do this is by copying and pasting it. Notice that it doesn't show you what you type. This is normal. To keep things secret and secure when typing in passwords, the terminal will not show anything. If you typed everything correctly, Git will copy the repository from GitHub onto your computer. If something went wrong, it will show you an error message. If you see an error message, read the message carefully and try again. It never hurts to ask for help, so ask a friend or your instructor for help if you get stuck. Once the project is copied onto your computer, we can use the command cd and ls to navigate the file system. The file hello.cc is C++ source code. We can use a C++ compiler to translate the source code into a binary file that the computer can run. This is called compiling a program. The command to compile the program is clang++ hello.cc. Using ls, we can see that there is at least one new file. One of the files is named a.out, which is the output from the compiler. We can run a.out by using the command dot slash a.out. The program a.out will print the message hello world to the terminal. Let's use git to see if there are any files that have been changed. Use the command git status. If nothing has changed, git will tell you, and since we haven't changed anything, it tells us that there are no changes. Let's make a small change. Using Microsoft Visual Studio Code, let's change hello.cc. Use the command code hello.cc. This will open the Visual Studio Code editor. On the first line, let's add our name as a C++ comment. Start the line with two forward slashes and then write your name. Save your file using the file menu. Let's use git status again. This time it should tell us that our file hello.cc has changed. 
Let's commit the changes into our repository by first using git add hello.cc. Check with git status to see that hello.cc has been added. You can see the color has changed. Commit the changes you made using git commit with a log message. Let's push the changes back to GitHub so that our instructor can see our work. Use the git push command. Git push shouldn't ask you for a password because if we configured git correctly, it will save your personal access token. If git push asks for your password, then you need to get some help from a friend or your instructor to get your personal access token saved. Let's double check that we successfully pushed our changes to GitHub. Go back to your web browser and refresh the repository page you can see that hello.cc has been updated recently. Click on hello.cc and you'll see the changes you made right there on the first line. These were the shell commands that we used in the video. You can learn more about the commands in the book, The Linux Command Line. These were the git commands that we used in the video. You can learn more about them in the, pro, in the book, ProGit. In summary, we configured Git on our computer to use our GitHub personal access token. We accepted an invitation to a GitHub classroom repository and then copied that repository onto our computer. Using shell commands, we were able to make a small change and push the changes back to GitHub.